G'day, good evening Australia and welcome to Tamworth where we have got a heck of a crowd at the Tamworth Hotel. Hello everyone up the back. We're glad you're here. What a night we have for you tonight on the show. The full hour here in what is going to be one of those seats that way too many people who have no say in this electorate will have a passionate opinion about, and that is who should be the next member for New England. Should it be the current or should it be the former? So we thought, rather than look on from afar, let's bring the show to the people who matter, and that just aren't the two blokes who want to get the votes, but the good people of Tamworth and the wider New England region who will make their decision in a few weeks' time about who that MP should be. We'll get into the conversation in a moment or two's time. But once again, round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for the Deputy Prime Minister, Barnaby Joyce. <laughs> and for the former member for New England, Tony Windsor. All right, and Tony Windsor, ladies and gentlemen, we've got so much to get to. We'll get questions from the audience, and I'm looking forward to asking both of these fellas plenty of questions that I'm quite sure will make them very, very comfortable, because that's my style. <laughs> All right, quick break with the news. We'll get to Tim Webster and then back and have a chat with these two very interesting fellas. Once again, live in Tamworth. <laughs> Thank you very much, Paul. Live pictures now coming to you from the Senate in Canberra, where a marathon debate is continuing on voting reforms the government claims will eliminate gaming of the electoral system by the minor parties and the independents. The Greens will side with the coalition, of course, to eventually pass that legislation, but Labor and the independents appear likely to stretch the process well into the night before that vote is taken. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister is facing a backbench revolt with 43 MPs signing a petition calling for a parliamentary inquiry uh, to defund the Safe Schools program. Backbenchers are expressing their concern about some of the material being offered to students in the anti-bullying program, while Labor has called on Malcolm Turnbull to stand up to the hard right of his party. New South Wales police have dug up part of a backyard south of Brisbane as part of their investigations into a missing toddler who hasn't been seen since 2007. Forensic officers have found possible bone fragments during a search of the Woodbridge property where the family of the toddler once lived. And the Victorian coroner has heard a federal police officer feared he was about to be beheaded as a radicalised teen attacked him with a knife. An inquest into Numan Haider's death also heard he died instantly from a gunshot. The agent credits as saving his life. And Telstra has apologised to customers again and say they're working progressively to restore service after an outage to its mobile phone and data service. The incident follows a similar incident last month where the company blamed human error for leaving millions of users without their coverage. That's it from us for the time being. Back to Paul in iconic Tamworth. God love Tamworth. Thank you very much, Tim. All right, lads, let's get straight into it here. Uh, Tony, I'll ask you up front here and first. Um, why do you want the old job back? Well, I'm very concerned about some of the things that have been happening in recent years, uh, particularly in relation to the standards that have slipped, in my view, both within the electorate, but also in terms of a lot of the regional issues. You know, uh, Armidale, for instance, has got first-class broadband. Uh, Tamworth is being asked, and Inverell and all the other communities, is being asked to accept second-class broadband. Uh, the Gonski education reforms that I had a bit to do with in the uh, hung parliament, for instance, We've really got to bite the apple on that and, uh, and address that issue. Otherwise, our kids and the state uh, national education minister, Adrian Pickley, very well aware of the benefits of this uh, and the previous uh, premier too, Barry O'Farrell, that the Gonski reforms assist those kids that need real attention. And I think in society today, if we don't start to address some of those issues when people are young, give the ex that extra bit of help to those kids that need that extra bit, uh, we pay for it later on, no, both in terms of employment or unemployment and other social issues. So the climate change issue too is one that's paramount to me. I think you know, we live in an area that will be impacted uh, by climate change and I think we've got to accept those risks and try and do something about that politically. So I wasn't prepared to walk past and just say, oh, well, I hope someone else does something about that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I've been prepared to step up. Barnaby, why another three years? What have you um, learnt and what do you want to do with the next three that you haven't been able to do with the first three? Well, obviously it's a, a great passion of mine to be back at my home, to be back in the New England. Uh, I feel that as a government we've had a, a good record. We had to take over from a position where financially uh, we were paying a billion dollars 
um, a week in interest. That's, uh, th that's four Tamworth-based hospitals a week. I didn't think that was a good place for us to be financially. I wanted to make sure that um, we continue on with a path to get further development into the New England. Um, one of the things we're fighting for to get APVMA into Armidale, it's 195 jobs there. Uh, soon we'll complete Chaffee Dam, that was started and finished in my term. Um, the money that we had to, uh, claw, I had to claw back and for the construction of projects such as Bolivia Hill, um, we've got the Scone Bypass in the, in the south. Um, to make sure that we continue on the work that we're doing with commodity prices. We've got record prices in cattle, we've got record prices in meat sheep. We've got real money coming back into, into the electorate, and that's incredibly important. Uh, to allow the seat of New England for the first time in history, and it's, it's a team that gets it, it's a team that allows it, to have the Deputy Prime Minister's office in this, in this seat. I think that's vitally important. I had a meeting with the Prime Minister this afternoon at four o'clock. I'm uh, meeting with them all, all every, every day. Um, it, this is really important because if you want to get anywhere in politics, you've actually got to influence the person who holds the checkbook. And you've got to have the capacity to be in close with that. You've got to have the capacity to, um, to make your way through the political system, and that happens over a number of years, to a position of the best influence. Now, I acknowledge that in a hung parliament, uh, an individual can have influence, but that's a very rare event. Um, I believe that uh, Malcolm Turnbull, that we are Turnbull Joyce government after the next election, and uh, that gives the seat of New England, the people of New England, uh, something that they've never had before, which is the Deputy Prime Minister's office, and I want to make sure that I serve them in the very best way I possibly can. Okay, I'm almost. Okay, I want, to, I, I want to give you both a chance to answer the other one's question here to a degree, so I'll put it the other way around. Um, Tony, what is limiting to a local MP if he is a minister and the Deputy Prime Minister? What is, what's the downside of that? Well, the downside is that they're beholden to the ministerial system. So they're beholden to the, uh, the Prime Minister and Cabinet solidarity. Now, that's got certain benefits, but it's also got some disbenefits in, in that you, you cannot fight for your people uh, as a free individual can in terms of uh, an independent. And uh, I think one of the things, uh, one of the other things I've, I've noticed since leaving the scene too, that New England's lost its fight. You know, we've had to fight to keep the um, uh, Defence Force contracts here before, and we've always won. We've lost this time. You know, we've had to fight to get uh, broadband into this area and other forms of telecommunication, and we're going back to a second uh, class arrangement. We see a classic example at the moment, uh, particularly in local government, uh, where the National Party, the people at this uh, theoretical table that we keep hearing about where the decisions are made and you've got to be there to make a decision, where the National Party is actually forcing two of our councils to amalgamate with larger councils. Uh, and these people then stand beside these councils and say, we're standing beside you. Well, if it's so important, if, if this business of being in power at the table is so powerful, uh, why are we going through that? Why, why is the government that these people belong to actually, in fact, uh, forcing them to amalgamate? And there's a whole range of other issues where you see similarities in terms of that. Okay. I'm happy yep. to address all those issues. Mm -hmm. Let's start um, with the last one first. Uh, there is no... There's nothing happening at a federal level for the amalgamation of councils. But what I can say, if they believe that there is an issue about amalgamation of councils at a federal level and what can be done, then whilst we had an independent both at a federal and a state level, we lost Baraba, Manila, Nundal, Parry. And I know because my family was in Parry. So this idea that somehow there's this epiphany where one day you're one person and the next day you're someone else, it just doesn't wash. Uh, I think people have got that. We will fight to make sure, and I absolutely believe that Walker has got to remain uh, separate. And also, and also um, uh, Gaira, we've got to make sure that we keep these places separate, we keep their identities. I played for Walker and Rugby, I have an absolute passion for that area. And um, I'll be making sure that no stone remains unturned. But you've got to be truthful and tell people where your effect is, whether it's a federal level or a state level or a local level. And I will try and influence my state colleagues about that issue. But isn't, but isn't Mr Windsor fair to say that when you're the Deputy Prime Minister, it's a whole lot harder to go rogue yeah. than maybe when you were the senator in Queensland or even wanting to be the candidate here, that the, there's an obvious restraint so, of government I, discipline. Yeah, that's, a, that's a fair question, Paul, and if I can address, address it in this way. Sometimes the reason you go rogue is to influence the person who makes the decision, is to influence the person as close as you get to the top. There's no point, if you are the, if you're the Deputy Prime Minister of Australia, 
to go rogue on yourself. I mean, what do you do? Go out the front, do a press press conference, complaining about yourself, and then go in and deal with the consequences. I mean, it's, you know, so um, I just want to make sure that if, if you're honest about it, how you bring the best outcome for these people, for the people of New England, is to make sure that uh, those issues are taken to the cabinet table because that's all that any other person in politics is trying to do. Influence cabinet ministers, better to be one. So here's the thing though, Tony, if, if you're able to be an independent member, I mean there are two, two obvious scenarios, an independent member but the current government is returned, how are you able to get anything for the community or if it's a Labor Party government you're still independent? In your previous term, now obviously there's a massive political career before this, but in your previous term you were able to get so much because literally without you there wasn't a government. That's very unlikely to happen again. So what can you achieve on the outside that you were able to achieve when you were right on the inside? Well, I think, Paul, if anybody's looked at my record uh, through the state years that I was in Parliament, uh, the federal years, I was elected into the federal parliament in uh, 2001 on a Saturday night. Uh, John Anderson, the leader of the National Party, um, on the Monday morning said on ABC Radio, the people of New England will be penalised for what they've done, you know, threatened the electorate. Uh, he also said that the equine centre, which I'd obtained money for at the state level, uh, not in a hung parliament, uh, uh, wouldn't be delivered whilst Tony Windsor was the member. We have, and I was the, I was the federal member when the federal money arrived, uh, and the community did an extraordinary job uh, through there, and I noticed a few of the councillors here tonight. But uh, we have a world first equine centre. We have a very, very good entertainment centre. We have a whole range of things that have been achieved uh, under the hands of, a, uh, uh, of an independent member. Now, Mr Joyce has claimed a few things, uh, like Chaffee Dam, for instance, and uh, I think anybody who lives here knows that that money came through in the hung parliament. It's, it's being finalised at the moment. I'm very proud of the things that, uh, that I've done. In the, in the last part... Uh, in, 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 well. I knew we were going to get a bit Republican debate in a second here. In, in Just the, wait till they finish talking before we all applaud. In, Both sides, by the way. In the last Parliament, and this is one of the things that uh, I think where political competition uh, really assists, we were able, and I know Rob O'Chott uh, with us, uh, in a hung Parliament, admittedly, uh, but there was uh, $2 billion in the Health and Hospital Fund, for instance. That went to 135 regional hospitals. Normally, regional Australia got about 8% of that, that money. The same with the Education Investment Fund. 100% of it going to uh, uh, regional universities. One in this electorate, but the balance in other country areas. One hospital, the Tamworth Base Hospital, was funded out of that, uh, that money as well. The rest, 134, in other parts of regional Australia. So the political competition that the independents deliver, the freedom from this uh, constriction of the group, the, the domination of the city-based parties on the group, uh, whether it be Labor or Liberal uh, or, or Liberal National, uh, I think uh, it gives you that freedom to argue the case. Now, if you don't have a logical argument, uh, nothing will happen. But this area has been very successful as a community, as a region, with arguing logically and successfully for various projects, irrespective of who's in government. OK. I do have to ask you, though, about that independent factor, and then yeah. we'll move into mining and all the other things that I know a lot of people want to hear about. Mm -hmm. Let's imagine news poll is correct. It's 50-50. Let's imagine there is a repeat of 2010. <laughs> Let's imagine you have to flip that coin again. Now, it was something that nobody thought was going to happen, so nobody was able to ask you beforehand. So let me ask you beforehand. If it is a hung parliament, will you side with a Shorten or a Turnbull government? Well, I think given the history of uh, the hung parliament, and, uh, and even Mr Joyce uh, could see through Tony Abbott eventually, I know some of your writings in the uh, Nicky... Uh, um, uh, in the book. I'll help you out. Yeah, yeah. The... Uh, the, uh, the the, the scenario that exists, or existed during that hung parliament, uh, wasn't an easy choice. But it was, it was very obvious after a certain period of time that Mr Abbott wouldn't have been up to uh, negotiating in a hung parliament. And I think that's been borne out uh, by the recent, uh, last year in the Senate, where a lot of the crossbenchers in the Senate, where no negotiation has to take place, and I think Mr Turnbull uh, is doing this quite adequately, actually. But Mr Abbott had hardly spoken 
to any of those cross benches. But I'm hopefully honest, Tony, but we haven't actually got the answer. Yeah. Yeah. But that's history. Well, that's I, 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 I'm interested in, in that future because I think yeah. a lot of people here, regardless well, of the history, the history of picking one from the other was all about sending a message to the community that it was, that it was, was capable of forming a government uh, because a lot of people didn't know how our governments actually worked. In terms of the uh, next parliament, I don't think there's any need to pick anybody. And in fact, we, sh we didn't have to do it last time. It's not worth the paper it's written on, in a sense. If, if, the, if there'd been no arrangement, the Prime Minister of the day would have entered the chamber and until there was a no-confidence motion uh, on that uh, Prime Minister, there would not have been a need to side with one or other. Look, so I, I have to pick him up on these things because they just can't go unchallenged. You have to go to the Governor-General and prove that you have the capacity to get the passage of supply and the budget. Mm. You have to provide the Governor-General the numbers. That's why he lives in the big house in Yarralumla. He's a pretty important sort of person. And the only way that that government, the Gillard, well, the, you know, the Gillard Green independent government came about is because you gave them support. You can't say no. it didn't happen. Well, let, let me... And, then, and with the other thing, with the, with, with, with the, the other issue, that, with the other issue that, you know, Minister, you can get these things apparently by, just by default, you have to convince the Treasurer. It has to go through an expenditure review committee process. I'm on the expenditure review committee process. I understand how it works. Just because you might wish for something doesn't mean anything. You've actually got to be at the table to deliver on it. OK, so, so what about that? Because, I mean, you know... You know Mr Shorten, you know Mr Turnbull, you've no, seen well, them as ministers. Well, let's, let's look at the scenario at the moment. If, in fact, there was a hung parliament, and I don't think there would be, the Prime Minister is the Prime Minister is the Prime Minister, and that presumably, unless they change again, would be Malcolm Turnbull. In that circumstance, and that, you know, you may laugh, but... The, no, no, the, it's a good point. The, 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 uh, they both change the prime, the prime Minister in that circumstance, if, in fact, one individual didn't side with one side or the other and it was dead level the prime minister would have the capacity to go to the governor general and say that we believe we've got the confidence of the house and he would have confidence of the house until a no confidence motion no, no, was, was no, actually no, made but no. is there a frustration though but I, I, is this thing where i don't want to get hung up on this because this is a a place that's a lot bigger than its history of the past couple of years but i do have to push you on it though which is the thousands of people need to know before they vote for you that one of the things an independent can do is become a kingmaker. Is your predilection to support the government, whatever it happens to be, or your vote is up for grabs? Well, I think given the, the last parliament, I wouldn't support either side. I'd stay independent. Well, that's going to be a big help to New England. That will be great. That'll be a great outcome. All right. Why, why can't you support one side or the other? Well, I don't think there's a need to. I think uh, one of the things we could have done last time, and... and uh, uh, I think a number of the independents considered doing that. We considered it. We, we considered it. Uh, but because of the knowledge of the parliament and how it worked, we, we thought it was best to show that a minority parliament could in fact be formed. Mm. Okay, now I want to turn attention to a couple of other things here and I know we've got some questions and we'll get to those in a moment or two. But first I want to ask you, Barnaby, about the battle between mining, jobs and the environment. Sure. It is one that seemingly, again, from everyone uh, who watched this electorate rather than live in it, that this is this binary choice, it's one or the other, that's it. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Shenhua, let's peg you down now. Sure. Should it or should it not happen? It shouldn't happen. I don't believe that you should have mining on primary agricultural land. And it's not just Shenhua, there's the other one too. There's BHP Karuna. Um, and what we are seeing now uh, with the mine at Weris Creek is the issues that reg regards water, regards the drying up of the bores, the dust impact, the noise impact. Uh, I think these should be taken into account. I'm doing everything within my power to make sure that they don't go ahead. Does that mean that you don't believe in mining anywhere? Of course not, because otherwise we won't have an economy. <laughs> in central Queensland, I su absolutely support Adani mine. I think it should go ahead. And, uh, you know, I think that it... That that we have to sort of clearly see this. Obviously, uh, the former member, Mr Windsor, must have supported mining too because we got the duplication of the railway line, I think it was about $290 million, out of the lower part of the Liverpool Plains into the Hunter Valley. That means you believe in mining there, but I believe that that section of the Liverpool Plains, the Round, round Breezer, uh, is the best country in Australia. There might be other country as good, but none better. I've said that publicly, I've said it since 2009, and that remains my opinion. But as you've said, you're the Deputy Prime Minister, you can't, you can't argue against yourself. You met with the Prime Minister yeah. tonight. 
Why is the government's policy still in doubt? OK, because with the, the overwhelming approval process of the mine rests with the state government. That is because the state government is the owner of the resource. As it is the owner of the resource, I think there's maybe 17 uh, levels of approval and 16 are held by the state government. Just so people know, neither Shenhua nor BHP Karuna are approved. They are not approved. And, and our job is to make sure they don't get approved. I find it slightly frustrating when you are trying to bring about the outcome that these people want, which is to stop the mine, that it turns into this internecine warfare where people, rather than working with you, are working against you. And um, there is only one mine in that area. It's Werris Creek, and I don't want what's happening in Werris Creek happening at Shenhua and... Okay, but room. in terms of the federal government, though, we know that that table has been groaning from all the things that are on it and nothing's being taken off the table. So of the planning approvals that the federal government are involved in, will we know before the election what the dead set position of the Australian federal government is with regards to either of those mines? Well, the, there is an ongoing assessment by the Environment Minister. My last discussion with the Environment Minister about this issue was this afternoon. Now, I just, we'll just go through another section of it. There were 10,000 pieces of correspondence that went to the Environment Minister about Shenhua. 10,000. Um, not one of them came from Mr Windsor. Not, not, not one not that we can find. You that's put it, you put it, you put in a, no, no, you, we've searched and we, you've put in a, a, a piece of correspondence about the water trigger, the water trigger, so did I this afternoon, just to double check, double check. And, uh, there was nothing there from you in that 10,000 pieces. You've talked about the water trigger, you never talked about Shenhua. If you were so involved in this, wouldn't you find the time and the dedication to send him a letter? Well, I think if uh, he did his homework, and a most recent review too, I've been helping a lot of people with their submissions because I was instrumental in, in getting the water trigger into uh, the, the current parliament. There's a lot of issues here, and it's a very complex issue. Very complex. Uh, but the Minister and the, the Minister for Environment have been uh, complicit by neglect in terms of some of the things that were put in place. In the hung parliament, the arrangement was that a full-blown bioregional assessment of the region, a snapshot of the landscape, uh, a look at the risk factors across the landscape, done independently by the Independent Expert Scientific Committee. A lot of that's been pushed to the side. There was another thing at the state level, a risk assessment process, uh, a world first, peer reviewed process to actually gauge the risks to water uh, in terms of these developments. Uh, one, um, two, and cumulative impacts uh, with coal seam gas, etc. So that you could get a snapshot of what was likely to happen, where the risks were, before you actually moved to this place. Now, we've had the state government. Kept, uh, shifting the uh, uh, guidelines around to make it look as though they're doing something. The federal government, uh, Mr Joyce himself, has been uh, trying to water down the water trigger. Says he's very much in favour of the water trigger. Uh, the Shenhua mine shouldn't go ahead. It should be done by objective science, not by the flick of a coin by a politician. Well, that's and that's what I'm... Uh, okay, I've been I'm trying to address all those OK, questions. cool. I just want to push you on one thing, yeah. though, Mr Windsor, which is seemingly a big part of the candidacy, mm -hmm. again, in the press coverage and things that you've said, the things you said in Canberra, the things you've said on, on Channel 2 and in plenty of other forums, which is, um, Shenhua in particular is seemingly a line in the sand. But I have to ask you, you sold your land in part to mining companies. Can you help us out? No, 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 no. no. With respect, I ask. How can you be both an avenger against miner, but also right. line your pockets well, with its... That's, that's where, money. and uh, this man is complicit in that too. I've told you place that. That's, uh, that, uh, that's <laughs> where... Is that the, not true? The, the, the argument, no. I'm not opposed to mining. Never have been. Never have been. And in fact, I was instrumental in bringing some of the coal mines into the Gunnedah Basin. The issue on the Liverpool Plains is not about whether you mine coal or not. It's the impact on the water and the lack of scientific knowledge. Now, I, I chaired the Sustainable Water uh, Committee back in the, the uh, late 1990s. Uh, I argued to get money for the Namoi uh, uh, Water Study uh, during the mid-2000s. Uh, I've been uh, in there arguing and, and uh, constructed the water trigger. Mr Joyce and others actually supported something that was put into... When you were in the Senate, uh, a similar thing uh, that uh, demanded that a bioregional assessment be put in place before exploration occurred. 
They voted that night with the Greens and others and got it through the Parliament. The Minerals Council came in that night and the next morning they recanted their vote. So this very issue that we're talking about now, and I can show people the hands up if they're interested in it. I can tell you the agreement the, 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 the very issue uh, that we're talking about, this exploration licence moving to a mining licence with Shenhua, could have been prevented if these people hadn't changed their vote that, that single night in the Senate. Okay, what's... what's okay, hang on, hang on. Hang on. What's... Okay, what's, what's this? Well, this is the um, agreement between uh, Mr Tony Windsor and Julia Gillard uh, to form government. And I've actually studied it with some interest. I'm trying to find the part where you say that they shouldn't go ahead with Shenhua Mine. It's not in there. It's just not there. <laughs> Should it have been? I have some doubts in terms of uh, Mr Joyce's capacity here in terms of the water. The water trigger didn't I've exist there. I've got no doubt about my capacity. I've got some about yours. The, the, the water trigger didn't exist at the start of this parliament. It did at the end. The water trigger actually gave the Commonwealth some say over mining. Uh, prior to that, it was essentially a state activity. There was great concern about the water on the Liverpool Plains and we wanted to produce some, a legislative package that actually allowed the Commonwealth, through the Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act, to oversight the risk profiles on these very precious lands. That land out there has the largest groundwater system in the Murray-Darling. We can't trivialise with that. Most coal mines can contain their impacts within their boundaries. So here's the question though, which is that that particular area, that particular mine, now doesn't exist in this electorate. Under the redistribution it now sits in the federal seat of Parks. Why not run for that seat? Well, I think there again, and uh, Mr Joyce has raised, raised, raised this issue, and I think you know, it's very simplistic to raise it. The impacts, the knowledge that we do have on those groundwater resources, the, the uh, groundwater zones that are out there, if something goes wrong at Shenhua, for instance, and it's 10 kilometres outside, the hole will be 10 kilometres outside the electorate. The impact could well be, potentially, and that's why we need independent sites, could well be in both electorates. But the, but the big impact, and this is the, the stupidity of this, is that the economic impact of, and we've just seen what happened in Brazil, the economic impact of something disastrous happening will happen right through this town, right through Gunnada, right through a whole range of other towns. Can I just ask a really obvious, a really obvious question? Uh, look, Mr Windsor, if you were so, if you could do so much in the hung parliament, why didn't you stop it then? Well, we, Why didn't you stop we, it then? Uh, Why didn't you go in and say that this mine miss, cannot go forward? You're, you're missing what, the point. You're, uh, you're falling for this. Uh, and, and, and when you talk about all the, the bioregional assessments, they're following exactly the same path that they were going to. There's not a jot of legislation that is different between what you've done and what is. And you, I, and you try to, to, try to, to that and then I've got to confuse everybody because you, you, you just... It's just calm not down, right. Calm down, calm down. Uh, <laughs> you, you have to go patronising sooner or later. Yeah. The, uh, the bioregional assessment process was put in place to, to have the science independently done. <clears throat> $200 million was, was put beside that. And that hasn't occurred. It's been sidelined in terms of, of the process. If it had occurred, it had been... We'd have the independent scientific, scientists out there actually doing the work. What we've, what we've had is the mining company. <clears throat> now, in terms of stop... No, just let me finish. In terms of stopping this, I'm not opposed to mining, but I'm opposed to appropriate science in terms of the water resources. That, we, this business of where we've got to now, you either want the mine or you don't, I'm not in that camp. I'm for objective science in determining what the risks are, and then you okay, make well, the So you'd be happy for Shenhua Mine to go ahead then? If, in fact, it could be shown that all the right, water good, well, That's very interesting that news the water for all these people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right, okay. Now, I want to take a break because I want to hear the people oh, of I know, I know this room. That, Paul. No, you've been talking say, all night. Just, just, uh, I, I want the people in this room to be able to have a chance to have their say. We can respond to other things. After that, ladies and gentlemen, plenty more live in Tamworth, a special edition of Paul Murray Live. Get ready for some questions from the floor.
Not many fuels can take you from Tamworth to Thailand. BP can. Fill up at BP and you'll also fill up on Velocity Frequent Flyer Points. Fill up and fly. BP, go your way. Experience a different kind of view and uncover Tasmania with Jetstar. Fly from Melbourne to Hobart for just $49. One-way check baggage not included. Offer ends midnight March 21 unless sold out prior. Selected travel dates and conditions apply. To book, visit Jetstar.com. Not being able to sleep, I think, is the worst thing. That's why I take Nature's Own Complete Sleep Advanced. Its natural sedative action helps me fall asleep, stay asleep and wake refreshed. Be a force of nature with Nature's Own. Easter's here. Time to enjoy delicious Coles hot cross buns. Some with chocolate, some with fruit, and some without fruit. All just $3.25 a pack. That's right, just $3.25 a pack. Hot cross buns and great value together for Easter at Coles. Talk to me, Tom. Mr. Alexander, the price for health insurance will increase on average 5.6% on April 1st. Son of a mongoose! Beat the health insurance price rise. Call us on 13 32 32 or go to comparethemarket.com.au. The beautiful people of the world have a secret. Well, when you add Zoosh to your food, you make yummy face. And when you make the yummy face, you beautify you. Zoosh dressing in mayonnaise, the secret to beautiful food. It's Coles Low Rate Mastercard time. The Coles Low Rate Mastercard is down every day to just 9.99% per annum on purchases. Hurry, apply today. Coles Mastercard. Can't contain your fabulousness? Get ridiculously good deals at lastminute.com.au Get your colleagues together and host a biggest morning tea in your office for Cancer Council. It's the perfect excuse to share the latest news and indulge your sweet tooth. You can show off your cake making skills and take time out while helping to beat cancer. It's easy to host Australia's biggest morning tea in your office. Simply text HOST2 to 0487 222 or visit biggestmorningtea.com.au Before our stores open, the Dan Murphy's Price Change Team is in early, checking competitor newspaper ads, catalogues and other advertised liquor prices. And if we find a lower price somewhere else, we don't just match it, we beat it straight away. To make sure you wake up to the lowest liquor prices every day, that's our guarantee to you. Life is often about compromise. You can be this, but it means know that. When you use technology, you lose character. Yes to power means no to efficiency. You compromise all the time. Imagine if you didn't. Mazda 6. Life without compromise. So, so. Welcome back to Tamworth and the Tamworth Hotel, a beautiful pub that was first built in the 1930s, one that has held plenty of political meetings over the years. And I'm pleased to say we're going to get to some questions in a moment with the two people who want to be the next member for New England. That would be the former. Please give a round of applause again to Tony Windsor, who is here, along with Barnaby Joyce as well, the current Deputy Prime Minister. Now, lads, before we move on to anything else, I wanted to ask you both one question, which was something that I think is very important to ask at this time. Tony, what's one thing you really like about Barnaby? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'd have to think about that. I, 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 thought he'd, I thought when he first came into the Senate, he showed some promise but, okay. uh, uh, in terms of uh, some of the educational things. I remember sending him a note that you could be proud of what you've... Uh, what you've done on that occasion. Right. And, uh, and, but he, some years later, he recanted on that as well. <laughs> All right. Well, even in a compliment, you give him a wag. All right, Barnaby, what's the one thing you like about Tony Windsor? Uh, I think he's got a very good family. Oh. Yeah. Go. What about him as a poly? Uh, when he, same deal. When he started, I think that he was uh, shaking the show up a bit. And we wanted that. And, uh, and we wanted to make sure that uh, more was achieved. 
Uh, I used to see that around my own family. Uh, there was so many of us who, uh, at the start, supported Tony. Okay. All right, let's get some questions here. The, all we'll ask here is that firstly you say your name and if you either have an association or a connection to the candidates, positive or negative, let's just put it all out on the table. I have no idea what these questions are, so this will be fun. What's your name? My name's Cathy Nicholson and I come from Inverell. Okay, what's a would you like, uh, who would you like to ask a question of? Uh, I'd like to ask the question of both candidates. The National Partnership Agreement around vocational education that was initiated by Labor has seen the, this federal government sit on their hands and watch $4 billion worth of taxpayers' funds uh, siphoned into the pockets of private for-profit um, um, organisations for dubious outcomes, in fact, for huge debts for a lot of students, at the same time as we've seen uh, TAFE decimated across our region. In, at a state level, we haven't seen the Nationals stand up and fight for TAFE, and my TAFE up at Inverell, that when I started had 20 people, 20 full-time workers, now only has two and a half. Students have to pay huge fees, uh, really out of, out of their ability to pay fees, and um, I'm wondering what these two candidates will do to protect TAFE, because we're going to see three out of four councillors cut in New England, okay, four okay. and a half out of six disability teachers cut. Right. I'm not being uh, literacy literacy your question, teachers. but I do, I do want to get to the to the nub of it here. Um, yeah. TAFE is obviously a state responsibility, but there's there's That's billions right. of dollars that are worth talking about. There's an issue there, as it's a state responsibility. Let's start with that, and we're yeah. federal candidates. The next thing is we do go into bat for things in Inverell. Best employment was in Inverell. It was going to be it, with the restructure. It could have been lost. I went into bat for best employment in Inverell. It is now much bigger. It is now a bigger organisation, and that's what you can do when you're at the table and you're facing it across at the Treasurer. These sort of things can happen. It delivers a better outcome. Now, in all governments, they are they ruthlessly determined by the money you've got in the bank. And uh, when we started, when we handed the government over to the Labor Party and later the Labor Green Independent Alliance, you people were rich. You had money in the bank. The world owed Australia money. It owed Australia tens of billions of dollars in money. When we finished, we were about $400 billion in debt. And of course, that causes problems. Because I'm an accountant, you've got to someday pay this money back. And that causes hard decisions, and nobody likes hard decisions. So the best thing you can do for your family into the future is make sure your nation is financially strong. Because if you don't do that, nothing else matters. So, Tony, I, I have to ask, uh, in anticipation of the I give a Gonski question in a second here, which is, as valuable as that funding seems to be, the point is the federal budget is $40 billion in the hole. That's on top of the 30-something billion the previous year, and we can go back to that cumulative debt of $400 billion. How do you pay for noble, important things like increased targeted education? Well, I think that it's about priorities. What I think. I think what uh, of? Sorry. So, what would you change? Well, I think uh, what Mr. Turnbull started to do was the way to deal with this. Uh, look at the taxation system in total, and try and come up with a fair package that addressed some of the income and revenue issues that the nation has. And in doing that, you determine the priorities that you have. Now, education has to be right up there if we want to be innovative. If we want to be agile, all of these things that we're talking about in terms of the future. And that's the major reason I'm recontesting. I'm very concerned about the future, whether it be uh, in terms of water or the uh, broader issues of broadband, etc. Uh, but education has to be right up there. If we allow these kids to lag behind, and TAFE's right up there as well. Very important in regional Australia, TAFE, the, the training of, uh, of kids who don't necessarily go to university. OK, let's, uh, let's get another question here, uh, again on the Gonski level. What's your name and, and what's Susan the question? Susan Armstead, New South Wales Teachers Federation and New England Voter. The Gonski Review recognised the greatest amount of additional funding is needed in rural and regional schools, our New England schools. The OEC Education Director stated recently that high achieving education systems direct more resources to schools that have high numbers of disadvantaged students. More than $3 billion of funding for New South Wales schools is at risk now if the final two years of the Gonski Agreement signed with the State Coalition Government is not honoured by their federal counterpart. 
We need certainty of funding so that students most in need, our students in the New England from disadvantaged backgrounds, students in remote schools in the New England, students up in Emmerville, Ashford and Bonshaw, Indigenous students and students with disability will continue to receive vital support. My question to both candidates is, knowing what is at risk for the schools in the New England, why would either of you seeking election in the New England not fight for and support the delivery of the fully funded Gonski model by the end of 2019. Okay. I'm going to take an executive decision and say that we've dealt in part with that, not all of it. Um, so I'm sure there's going to be other education things I want to get back to in a second. We've spoken about Gonski and how it is and isn't funded, so thank you for your question. But yeah, the next one here. Hello, I'm Val Hillman, I'm from here in Tamworth, and my question's to both candidates. Um, where do you see Australia economically in the future? When I vote, I vote for a local candidate, but I want somebody who to represent Australia as well on the overseas markets and, and all of those types of things. I want a, somebody who can responsibly run our country, not just the New England. Um, I don't want to be another Greece, thank you. Um, can we trade out of the situation we're in or do we have to tax our way out of the situation we're in? Okay, thank you very much. So what was your name that I asked before? Yes, I'm Val. Sorry, Val. I've got a million people in my head and most of them make no sense, but you perfectly <laughs> did and I appreciate it. Tony, I'll get you to go first there about the economy as whole and whether we tax our way out of it or how we actually... Well, I think there's enormous opportunities in regional Australia particularly in terms of renewable energy. And the, uh, I think we'll see into the future, and the question was about the future, we will see uh, micro power grids in our communities. And we may well see that in Tamworth where the waste products and other, other things through biodigestion is turned back into energy. We're seeing it at Inverell, one of the biggest meat processing works up there uh, that went through the uh, uh, Clean Energy Fund uh, in terms of its funding. So there's a number of opportunities there. Obviously, we're going to be very reliant on agriculture. And that's one of the reasons why I think we've got to be very careful what we do with our water. Yeah, we've got the Great Artesian Basin, we've got the uh, uh, largest groundwater system uh, out at, uh, on the Liverpool Plains. And we've really got to make sure that those risk assessments take place. Now, the government's white paper is about... OK, but I want to... Uh, Sorry? Sorry, just... just no, but, uh, the, go the, yeah, the government's white paper is about expanding agriculture into the north. Why would Did you, you ask about the white paper? No, oh, well, that's the answer you're okay, getting. But okay, just, just... Well, I'm answering the question in terms of the future of the nation. And, and the white paper addresses expansion of agriculture into the north. My point is, why would you risk three million acres of land in the Namoy system through the disturbance of the water okay. resources uh, when uh, yeah. the uh, uh, what, what pie Mr. in the sky Winters stuff about just northern just Australia is being talked about. Mr. Okay, right, but Mr. about the economy? Look, I absolutely agree with you. As, as an accountant, and as an accountant who initially, uh, when I was in uh, the shadow finance minister, clearly stated to our nation that the debt was the trajectory of the debt needed to be brought into, under control. It worried me intensely. It worried me so much, to be honest, I was put aside in that job. Unfortunately, what I said was, the I don't know why you find that funny. Unfortunately, it was the truth. That was the whole problem. They found it funny. We found it in terrifying, and we wanted to try and change it around. Now, you talk about the economy. We are doing everything in our power to expand, and we actually have people on the ground expanding our capacity to earn money from agriculture. Seven new live animal destinations, in fact, nine, two of them are minor, live animal destinations. When they closed down the live cattle trade, you've got to remember, Mr Windsor did not support us. He did not support us. He let it happen. That's not true. And then, and then, and then there was, then we had three free trade agreements. Free trade agreements that just never got off the ground under the Green Labor Party Independent Alliance. We've landed them. We've had the biggest turnaround in soft commodity prices in cattle, in sheep, in our protein grains such as chickpeas. We are seeing changes in the, in the, in the base contracts for wines. We are trying to make sure that we go through this whole process of making the pie bigger. We too believe in, in water. And and that is why we've got half a billion dollars on the table for a start for the construction of new dams because we believe a nation is great when it constructs for the future, when it builds for the future, when it builds a water infrastructure for the future. Right. We believe that we... Right. But Mr. Mr. Windsor, I will pick you up on, on the interjection that you just made there on the Deputy Prime Minister. What did you do to save 
the live cattle industry from the decision of the Labor Party government, which was to shut the damn thing off straight yeah, away? Uh, I was very involved. Uh, Nigel Scullion, uh, a fellow, a fellow min minister of yours, uh, was in my office when some of that was being negotiated as well. I had a lot to do with the, uh, the, the shippers, the boat... Was it a mistake? Boat. Was I, it a mistake to when, shut it down? When John Cobb put up a motion, was, put up a motion was, you voted against it. Uh, you uh, voted against the motion. You know, <laughs> no, if you're going to moderate or... Yeah, well, just yeah. I'm letting you finish. Yeah. You know that motion included uh, stunning. You know, the, you know the motion. I, I think I what you did to the cattle industry was stunning. I, know, I, know, I, think, I think that was stunning. It was stunning you, to the people yeah, of northern and, Australia, and, I can and assure you, you of that. Know, if, you would know that the, uh, the Indonesians weren't keen on stun guns being used. Oh, that was... Now, that was, in, in terms of... Uh, well, that was part of your motion. No, that was, that was part of the motion. You could have gone into Miss Gillard's office and say, this is ridiculous, turn it around straight away. Yeah, you told us you had that power. That's, that's what and when, the na when this seat relied on you to actually affect that power, you let them down. Yeah. All right, I, I've got to take a break, but uh, we can either pick it up there or we'll speed through even more questions. So thank you very much, Val, and thank you to the good people at Tamworth. Geez, I wish this was a two-hour show, but I think I'm the only one of the three who would like that to be the case. More in a sec. <laughs> plan to paint, plant, tidy, trim, mow or blow. Fighter 10 has got some awesome ideas for autumn. Like six litres of Accent Interior, only 55 bucks. Nature Grow Garden Range, any four for 20. 26 litre flexible tubs, two for just 10 bucks. 30 pack of double and triple A batteries, only 12 bucks. And this two tiered Hexies garden bed, only 99. That's mighty helpful, Fighter 10. Jetstar's Big Aussie Break is on now, with fares starting from just $29. Offer ends midnight Eastern Daylight Time, March 8, unless sold out prior. Selected travel dates and conditions apply. To book, visit jetstar.com. It's like I always say, Sergey. If you can't beat them, buy them. <laughs> Mr. Alexander, it's a Thank pleasure you. to meet you. I'm... Tom. Hello. So, talk to me, Tom. Mr. Alexander, the price for health insurance will increase on average 5.6% on yeah. April 1st. Last year, oh. some policies went up by 18%. Son of a mongoose. Beat the health insurance price rise. Oh. Call us on 13 32 32 or go to comparethemarket.com.au. The beautiful people of the world have a secret. Well, when you add Zeus to your food, you make yummy face. And when you make the yummy face, you beautify you. Zoosh dressing in mayonnaise, the secret to beautiful food. The home battery revolution is here. The amazing new Tesla Powerwall is now available from SolarHeart. To celebrate, we're offering 36 months interest-free on batteries, solar power and solar hot water. Call SolarHeart now. Oh, he's not well, mate. You've got to do something. Inspirations Paint. Yes. Right now, for every $100 you spend in store at Inspirations Paint, you'll get a $20 voucher for your next project. Spend $200 and get $40 worth of vouchers. Spend $300 and get $60 worth of vouchers. It's like you can't afford not to do that project. Easter's here. Time to enjoy delicious Coles hot cross buns. Some with chocolate, some with fruit, and some without fruit. All just $3.25 a pack. That's right, just $3.25 a pack. Hot cross buns and great value together for Easter at Coles. Everyone's got a story like this. Charlotte, this is my old friend, Christian. He's as old as the hills. I've never told anyone. My God, are you just pretend? Booking a hotel? Hotels Combined has the best selection of offers and deals all in one place. Simply search, select your options, and find a great hotel deal on every device. Compare with the bear at Hotels Combined. Rush in for Repco's massive Easter sale. Six litre Penrite Vantage 10W40 with free oil filter, only $29.99. That's 40% off. 20 metre water hose reel, just $44.99. What a bargain. Repco massive Easter sale, don't miss out. Ooh. 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 
scorched by the flames of passion. Get ridiculously good deals at lastminute.com.au. Welcome back to Tamworth for a very special edition of Paul Murray Live. Each Thursday we are hitting the road as part of our election trail. We're in the seat of New England right now with its current member, Barnaby Joyce, and the man who would like to be its returning member, Tony Windsor. Give him a round of applause again. Another... We've literally got about five minutes, so make your question count. What's your name, sir? Kevin Tung. G'day, um, Kevin. I'm wearing two hats here tonight. I'm a local primary producer out at Bloomborough, and I'm also the president of the Tamworth branch of the New South Wales Farmers. My question to Tony is, in 2011, you supported Labor's um, live export ban of cattle to Indonesia. How could you justify doing that when it hurts so many people in so many places throughout Australia? Okay. And will you still believe this should be shut down? What's your thoughts on that? Just to give you a few okay, okay, indications... Sir, sorry, I've literally got such a short amount of time that I appreciate the question. In 2013, we got $980 head for cattle. Yep. On Monday, we got 1622 All right. Thank you, sir. Is there anything you guys want to add? I think, I think we're... OK, I, right. I, I was involved in the solution. And, and that's, that's pretty well documented. I'd hate to see when, what happens when you're involved with the problem. OK, all right. Next, next, next along, what's, uh, what's your question? Thank you very much, mate. Sorry to be so brief. What's your name? What's your question? My name's George Spring. I've got a quick statement and then a question okay, for, make for the both question. candidates. Make uh, your pick. Tony, the people Make your of... pick, sir, because uh, I own radio. the microphone. So, um, right, statement or question? It's been the most effective, I think, is what we're really looking at here. Which, which of these candidates will be the most effective? And Barnaby's obviously already in Cabinet. He is the Minister for Agriculture culture and we are predominantly an agricultural community in the New England um, and uh, and so, Tony you've burnt your bridges uh, with the Nats I don't believe the coalition are very happy with you either so how do you feel you can really be effective in a in the next uh, government moving forward okay Tony well uh, I, thank you mate I, I think my record would show that in various parliaments that I've been an independent in that there's been success in terms of a lot of the issues that I've been involved with, a lot of the things that have been constructed within the electorate, and the very uh, issue that George Spring, the questioner, is on about, uh, is in fact the amalgamation of his council. He's doing a very good job in relation to that. Uh, I'm prepared to fight for those people. Now, when you've got state governments, and he's asked the question, when you've got state governments who are making decisions to actually amalgamate these people, the very people they say they're representing, I think that's when they need people who are outside that structure actually fighting for them. OK, Barnaby? I think it's just politics 101. You have to get to the position of influence. You have to have the capacity to know the Treasurer, to know the Prime Minister, to get decisions done. You have to have the capacity to pick up the phone and make things happen. What happens for other people is they have to try and influence somebody, an independent, who comes and tries to influence me. Now, I'd prefer just to be me and influence myself rather than wait for somebody outside to try and tell me what to do. And that's why you get effective. And, of course, you've got to be part of a team. You've got to be part of a team, otherwise you have chaos. And chaos is what we had in the previous parliament, and that's not what we want again. I need a 15-second response, mate. With, with, with due, due respect to Mr Joyce, we've just gone through two and a half, nearly three years of this business of having a man at the table. Very little has happened in the electorate. That's not right. We've that's lost... A, that's we've, very little has happened. Uh, and he's fast recreating a record, and even in the last few days, things are starting to happen because of political competition. Oh, right. but, oh, yeah. it. I think this, I think this is... This is, you know, this is if there's any rewriting of history, to be quite frank, Mr. Well, Windsor, you're you done. You're doing well. <laughs> 28 mobile phone towers. See, like the green. 28 mobile phone towers, new and upgrade. We've got more to come. Uh, bridges, Abington Bridge, Booker Carrara Bridge, Seven Mile Bridge. Um, we have all the uh, Armdale Airport upgrade. Uh, the the money. You didn't have all the money for Chaffee Dam. We got it. We actually got the approvals through. It'll be completed next month. That's because we did it. Um, we can go on. That's, you know, this goes on. This is real delivery. You live in this sort of, you try to spin this yarn to people that somehow from outside, from outside that we will somehow absorb 
all your good intentions and they'll get through Cabinet or they'll get through the expense review. So you'd penalise the Expense, sorry, expense Review Committee. Would you? And you'd penalise well, it. No, that's what you did. If I win the that's seat, you'd penalise so, it. And so, yeah, so well, yeah. see, yeah. it's quite simple. If you, uh, if you win the seat... Very not, similar to Mr Anderson. Oh, dear yeah. me. You yeah. are a very angry Mr. man. Mr. You are a very angry Mr. man. Mr Anderson, but... You are a very angry man. All right. We are officially out of time. I really want that second hour. Um, I'm so sorry to everyone who is waiting to ask questions. Uh, no doubt, hopefully, the gentleman will answer them privately in the next little while. I think on the behalf of the rest of the country, and most importantly, the community that's going to hear a lot of you in the next little while, I'd ask that everyone shakes hands and we... A good fight in the next little while. All right, Barnaby Joyce, Tony Windsor. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to the people of Tamworth. We'll see you next week for more Paul Murray Live. Ta-da. Thanks again, boys. Thank you.